All right, guys, welcome to the One Life Podcast. My guest today is Kelowna. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are a personal trainer. I am. A nutritionist. And what else do you do in that fitness realm? Um, health coach and a licensed mental health therapist. Oh, which is the thing we're going to dig into the most, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I just gave you a little bit of context, a little background on yourself. Let, let's, let's touch on that. Where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? <laughs> so you're, you're quite healthy. You were quite active, right, when you were young? I was. Uh, like, the average, go to the gym, you know, I'd watch what I eat. I'd indulge, but I enjoyed life, mm. you know. And then Navy came along? And then Navy came along. Um, I would say I actually probably got into a little bit better shape, obviously, going through, yeah. you know, the training regimen. Uh-huh. Started getting ready to go. And then the, what kind of happened there? Was it, was the injury come from the Navy? Was it beforehand? Was it? So prior to um, going into the Navy, I was diagnosed with war herniated disc, spondylitis, spinal stenosis, degenerative disc disease, the list goes on. I had a terrible back. Was it from, <laughs> was that just uh, from an injury or it's just something? You know, I remember the doctor saying you're either 80 years old or you have amnesia and you were in a terrible car accident because we've never seen a back like this for really? a 17 year old. So you didn't fall, you didn't twist, you didn't no i was in the gym like i you know i was very really active but there was were you lifting nothing. heavy were you i was lifting and i was working with a trainer actually so i don't think you know safety wise i feel like it was good it might have been repetition but i think it might have been susceptible i mean to you it. look at some of what some people are doing you can't <laughs> be doing god so is you was it is it hereditary is it from like parents is it from family so at that time obviously we didn't know um moving into you know, as time went on and Navy and things started coming up, it was kind of alluded that I may have had um, an immunocompromising Crohn's, which, you know, the body kind of breaks itself down, and yep. I was on treatment for that for a while, and there was some theory that, well, maybe it was already degenerative or hereditary, right, that I was just born with a narrower spine, and I was more susceptible to this kind of stuff. Gotcha. Okay. So you actually, do you guys should get in the Navy before you, before it really starts catching up? I you? did. As you're getting in? Um... It really caught up as I was, you know, going, but I wasn't in any pain. I should actually make sure, you know, make that clear. I wasn't really in, in much pain. Something was just off, and it just kind of came out because I had one really bad day, but otherwise it was, I was good. When you say off, like, what do you mean by off? I felt like an ache. I felt some weird stuff when I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and, and then that's actually what led me to the doctor. So I was like, well, I'm going to boot camp. Like, I better make sure, you know, yeah, it's, all is good. It's, a, it's just an ache, all that, and it's just an ache. And it's, it was weird, that's yeah. It's like, so it was like telling, it was like testing me it was like you know you're really ready to go um i got some steroid injections you know some epidural, mm -hmm. whatever and then i i was good i said no matter what i'm leaving if i come back in a wheelchair i, I don't care i'm going to the navy and i did <laughs> do you think it's more um when you hear all that stuff you start to like feel worse oh for or sure you start to like question it and oh my god Absolutely. you know when you don't know you don't know yeah, absolutely and oh what if and wait you know yeah. if right absolutely so lead, lead me through lead me through what happened like you you go to the navy you know you've got these symptoms or not symptoms you know you got these like massive issues yes does that stop you from getting in the navy though or did you lie um well you know not confirm more to <laughs> that part yeah okay but, but I wasn't anything because so i was like well i don't you know have anything to disclose so you had, okay so you had no so, reason to go right on. But when I was there, it was literally like a devil on my shoulder because it was like every day or every day I wake up or, you know, I'm like, okay, what, what if I start getting those aches and pain? You know, we're doing so much strenuous stuff. What if the doctors were right? What if something does happen? I mean, that was every single day at training weighing on me. Mm, okay. Did it make it worse? There was um, a period where it did get, you know, very bad. And that was like the first moment in my life where I'm like, am I going to let this take over? That was definitely this. Am I going to give up? Am I going to, you know, my mom was like, oh, we're, we're saving everything back home. We think you'll be back. No one ever believed that I could get through, mm. you know, we can't, no one, it was very like, oh, you're going to the Navy. Ha ha. You know, it was dance team cheerleader, whatever. Um, and oh, so. Oh, so daddy, you just on you alone, not even on your injuries. Yes. Oh, damn. Okay. And who I was as a person. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. A what lot of what it. made you go to the Navy then, if you were like that? Uh, I wanted more out of life. Mm. Um, I was very fortunate and I, I was actually a swim instructor when I was 16 so I had a pretty good you know job and at the time I, I did not want to go to college it was very that's not for me uh, which is ironic now <laughs> you know mm. after how much school I've done um, at the time I did it and I was looking around me and you know my my co-workers were much older than me and I'm like well like is this what I want to do and nothing against swim instructor you know whatever yeah, yeah. it was just there was a fire 
fueling inside me, and I'm like, no, no, no I, I, it's, there's got to be something more for me. This, mm. this isn't it. Gotcha. Yeah. Were your parents in the military? Um, they were not. My mom's, you know, now husband was retired um, fighter pilot. Um, okay. But that actually was not part of it at all. Uh, How I got into it, I actually hated school so much. I wanted to graduate early, and the only class that was offered for seventh period to get that extra credit um, was. ROTC. I don't know if you're familiar. No, no. Um, JROTC. So it's basically Reserve Officer Training Corps. It's like okay. it's like a military, you know, class. Yeah, yeah. And and after I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do that again. I was like, well, I was a dance team, you know. I was like, well, this is not for me. And I was like, I needed the class, whatever. I tell you, day one, I'm like, this is it. I'm supposed to be here. Interesting. Yeah, I just felt the calling. Uh, yeah, I yeah. was like, these are my people. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so you're in the Navy, and then it, it catches up on you, I'm guessing. Yes. How, um, how far in? How long did you lost? So there was periods. The first time it, it got really bad was about three years in, and again. Oh, so you're in for three years. There, I was in for t- 10 years almost. Oh, you really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and so there was a point then, there was like a month long, I was in the hospital where you medical clinic, they were doing things, and I was like, no, 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 you know, I don't want surgery, you're too young, wh- whatever. And then once again, it like, was okay, and then there was another period like that, and then the very worst one was um, 2018 when everything. So how many years in were you there? I, at that point, um, se- seven years. Oh wow! Yeah, so you're yeah, well and truly in. Yeah. So if you didn't even try, you would have lost seven years of. Yeah, you know I mean the fact you even tried, you got seven years in. That's yes. amazing. And it was one of those things. Come three years, I was like, you know what? You know, life on the other side. Maybe it's look so. You know, again, it's like test. Like, are you gonna? Throw mm. it in, and going to throw it in, and yeah. What was your position in the Navy? So when I was enlisted, I'm, I'm you know, not sure if you're familiar with enlisted officer. When I was enlisted, I was a um, master at arms, which is basically police equivalent. Okay. Um, and then once I got my degree and I commissioned, I was a surface warfare officer. Oh, wait, really? See, so okay, so you did just going through it in the Navy. I did. That's, that's why the part. irony that that's I joined the Navy because I didn't want to go to school, and yeah. then I ended up. But I mean, that I mean, you grow up, right? Absolutely. Things change. Okay, so that, okay. I gotta put a plug in there, though. Yeah. I don't know it's that I didn't want to go to school. Truthfully, I didn't think I was smart enough to finish. That's, yeah. Let me, let me that's, rephrase that. That's powerful right there. Isn't <laughs> it? I feel like a lot of people like that. They don't try things because they're scared that they can't finish yes. it. I think I truly, oh, I just got chills. I think I always wanted to go to school. Yeah, yeah. that's, <laughs> and that's just being honest with yourself, yeah. right? I feel like so many people don't start a business, don't do this, don't try the weight loss journey because... They don't think they can do it. Yeah, of course. And that's where little baby steps come from. That's Absolutely. where increments come from. Absolutely. Gotcha. Seven years in, it catches up on you pretty bad. And then what happens? Um, I have back surgery. Um, I lost bladder control. My right leg was like almost in paralysis. When yeah. you say back surgery, what do they actually do? So they relieved the nerve that was being compressed. Um, they went in there, my mm. laminectomy, laminectomy. They relieved pressure off the nerve. Um, but in doing that, it's basically less jelly, if you will, I don't, you know, in the spine, um, so that also over time leads to more issues. So mm, that's yeah, why yeah. Very, like, no surgery. Um, so yeah, they did that, and then the plan was, okay, I'll meet the ship, I'll go back to deployment, all good. Um, and then six weeks into rehabbing that injury, the level above did the same thing, so L5, uh, S1, L4, L5. Um, and then at that point, it was, you, you, you know, you're done. Yeah, so they, they basically kick you out, do they? Yeah, it goes through this a very you know long medical board process, and once they said you're done, I hit rock bottom um, mentally because I was like, well, "This is my future. I planned all my eggs in a basket. This was it. This was my so identity." You were gonna stay in the navy way. Oh yeah, it was so you, you were happy. You really enjoyed it. I loved it. Really? Oh, I loved it. That's gotta be hard. I, I loved it. Yeah. It was that constant every day something to work for. You know that you're not good enough type of keep trying, keep pushing, that something to just always be better, do better. And the ability to go to school, to upgrade your skills at any time, right? Like right, it's encouraged. absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a, cause like you talk to a lot of people in the military that they can't wait to get out. They sign up, but like, they wish they didn't, they can't wait to get out. Well, you're the opposite. But you know, the grass is always greener, right? Yeah, it looks true. looks good over the fence, what's going true. on. And then that's all things, right? But, mm. but yeah, of course. But it's cool, okay, it's cool that you found. So what happened, do you, you have, major back problems and Ma- then 
Yeah. And I have to say, I, I truly always loved fitness and exercise and being active, whether or not I was super doing it all the time. I, I always loved it. So one of the things that was hardest for me was when they said, well, you know, you're not off your career, you are not going to be able to do any of the things that you love to do. You mentioned something earlier, which is called um, losing your identity. Mm -hmm. And I, th I feel like like your fitness side is your identity. Your the Navy is your identity and you lose that literally overnight. Right. Well, when it's in, how do I say it? When your career or your relationship or whatever creates your identity, then when that's gone, that's taken with it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So what happens there? This is when things get bad, right? Things get bad. I hit depression. I'll be very honest. Um, anxiety through the roof. And I've always, you know, I've always struggled with anxiety. I had panic attacks when I was younger, but this got to a point where, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave my room. I mean, shutters down i would sleep i go to work if you know but at that point i was healing so i actually had time off so it was were we healing by yourself or your i was still in the navy so okay this is right around when the pandemic started which kind of um what is it made it longer out processing kind of delayed that okay. period um so i was in but not in type of a okay. thing um so this was in hawaii at the time is where i was living um, so you're in Hawaii and you're yeah, still unhappy. And, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it got so bad. I remember a day my mom said, if you don't do something, if you don't like, you know, basically fix yourself, whatever, I mean, I'm going to like call the ambulance on you. You're freaking me out. Like, what, what, what are you doing? Mm. You know, you, you need help. <laughs> That's okay. So what, um, you, like, how long are you in there before you get out? Like, feeling like that? Be before I get out of the Navy or before I get out of... Oh, before you get out of the Navy. Um, get... so it was... Uh, over a year, um, but... So if you, if you're not working properly, being in pain, being depressed. Oh, yeah. Just isolating yourself. Yes, uh, to, to that degree, but I'd say it was well before that already, though we had some panic and stuff going on, but it was a year of solid, like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm done. You must have a lot of close friends and stuff too, though, right? You know, I, I did, but I, I chose not to. How, how do I say Yeah, that's it? I knew they were there. I didn't really, you know, reach out or or ask for, you know, the help or w whatever the case was. But I was very, I was supported. Um, but I just went to my turtle shell. Gotcha. <laughs> what What is that like? Like you hear about that, but like, what what actually goes to your head where you just disconnect from everything? Um, it, it, the world is dark, and it's so funny. I was talking, almost being like, you know, tears in my eyes now because I can almost like feel feel what a dark place that was. And that's the best way to describe it. It's just, it's dark. You you can be in a room full of people, but if you tell yourself or, you know, you feel alone, you're alone. It doesn't mm. matter. There can be 50 people in the room, but if I feel alone, I feel alone. And it was it was that kind of principle. Gotcha. Okay. So what happened? You mentioned you put weight on. You mentioned... I, I did. I put almost 50 pounds um, of weight on and granted like that was you know kind of started before that year but it was I bl blew up um, because I, I wasn't taking care of my diet um, like I said it was depressed it wasn't really getting out it was eating away their problems even you know started drinking and a lot more and yeah to just masking everything and just everything and to the point where I even convinced myself I was okay with that that I was happy. I was. I was saying that I. This new lifestyle I had. I was. I. I was starting to convince myself that this is. This is. This is good for me. Gotcha. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone say anything? Friends? Like. Um, I mean, surely people must have seen what's going on. Sure, but I was so good at getting to the point where I was convincing myself I was okay with this lifestyle. I think I might have started convincing them too that it was good for me okay so you kind of <laughs> it's kind of like this um, rabbit hole right like you can't exercise as much you stop eating as well yeah. you start drinking start putting weight on you start to spiral it does it probably speeds up if anything right oh for sure and then mm. it got worse and then it became my new like okay this is my new you know kind of lifestyle yeah mm. and then and it was i was almost like like accepting of it but as i'm accepting of it from the outside i'm actually getting more depressed 
that, that yes yeah, so, I mean you're falling deeper and deeper right but like surface so it's almost like I'm even conflicted in myself I'm like well yeah, I'm convincing these people I'm saying this is my new life it's fine but I'm actually going to a worse place yeah you're feeling worse about yourself you're feeling worse your mental health is getting worse yes. you're isolating yourself more you're getting more alone right it's, yeah it's it's getting nothing but worse and worse and worse right and deeper and deeper and deeper yes which makes it harder to come back yeah, absolutely yeah that's yeah. crazy so how long were you like that before you before something like clicked before you made some type of change so like i said almost like a, a year um i mean it was a long a long time i feel like but and a year doesn't seem like long but in that state I'm sure a year feels like 10 years. Oh, and I mean, in, in that state, it's two days is too long. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, Just you know. Just so heavy. And, yeah, yeah so ab- absolutely. And, but granted, you know, it could be 20, it could be whatever, but I decided, and I don't know exactly how many months or a year, whatever days, I woke up one day, I remember the day, and I said out loud, I'm taking my life back. What, had the doctors told you you can't do certain things at that point? They did. They said... What had um, they told you? You're not going to be able to run again. For, forget, well, obviously, of course, you know, forget the Navy. Um, all those activities that you like doing before, because, you know, I love to dance, love to this and that. And they were like, you're always going to have problems. You're always going to be in pain. You're never going to be able to lift heavy weights at the gym. Just everything. You're very fragile now. Be careful. You're going to have back pain the rest of your life. Um, you need to get used to this new normal. All the things that I basically convinced myself also that mm. will. Do you think them telling you that kind of like made you believe that? Oh, absolutely. I did. Do you think... <laughs> So do you think, doc- obviously doctors are doing it to, to be cautious, right? Mm-hmm. But do you think there's a better approach that doctors should be, should be telling you and something that would have helped you a lot more? You know, and I'm, I'm not a doctor and I don't want to speak. Is there another way to frame it? Sure, maybe, let's say. But I will actually take full responsibility because we can't control what people tell us, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a person. Mm. We can only control how we respond to it. Exactly, right. So I don't even want to say that, okay, maybe, you know, Dr. So-and-so should not have said that. In my, absolutely not. He can say that and I can do what I want with that information. Mm. And I chose for a year to believe it. Or, yeah, or you could take it as fuel. I'm, like, I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm going to prove her wrong. And it yeah. took me a little while to come <laughs> to yeah. that, but that's exactly what I did. Okay, so what was, what was the week? What was the, just that wake up point? What was that? Um, like, being honest with myself. Like, what, what took that? Did you just wake up? Did you look yourself in the mirror? Did you yeah. have a conversation? Um, when I was going through the depression and, you know, seeing key mental health um, services, I got put on a lot of medication. It was one thing to the next. It What's was one medication? What like what for? I mean, so it started as you know something for the anxiety. Then it was something for sleep. Then it was okay, anxiety's you know better now. It's something for depression. Then it was okay. Now it appears that your anxiety and your depression has now led you to have bipolar stuff. Now it's something for that. And it it was all these things. And again, I believed whatever we were saying, and, and you should, right? They're professionals, but I started believing these labels of, okay, this is who I am, I gotta take these pills to be, you know, normal. And then I truly didn't recognize myself. I was like, wait a second, which came first, the chicken or the egg? But I'm, I'm taking all these pills to make me be this better person, right? And then I like kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, who, who am I? So t- at uh, 12 months, you're not taking a single thing. Wow. And then in the space of this. So I, I was, I was, we're right, in the space of, sorry, 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 I was taking it, and then I, and I wasn't, is that what you mean? No, I mean, like, before your back grip kind of gave way, yeah. you were healthy, you weren't taking a single pill. I wasn't taking a single pill. And also, within sorry. 12 months, you're taking all of this. Oh, yeah, I went from, let's try one thing to your anxiety, to, at that point, probably try five different things. But nobody suggested going back to the way you started with, like, hey, maybe try to be active and eat better, and right. it was more like, that's, that's and that's, I feel like, this is the biggest problem in society, especially in America. Right, so here's, like, here's, here's the, here's the, yeah. Not like, let's get to the, let's get to the core of this. And the irony in that is the pills probably contributed to some of that weight gain. Oh, uh, it's contributed to everything. It contrib- you know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's, it's masking, right? It's right. It's dealing with it. So, yeah. And I mean, I'm not opposed to medication. Right. But someone who seems like they probably don't need it, 
and who seem to have their life together and now they don't, it's right. probably, let's get your life back together and then see if you need it. And I want to make it, you know, some, especially some mental health professionals, sometimes it's absolutely needed. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't, you know, ever, and I don't want it to be looked upon if you are taking medicine or whatever. I am, if you need it, I'm a huge advocate. If you don't need it, I'm a huge advocate. Mm. <laughs> Type of yeah, thing. super interesting. Okay, taking all the pills. So what, you wake up, you look in the mirror, like what is that, what is that changing point i i didn't recognize myself and something even more um like a wow moment i had it's not that i didn't recognize myself i didn't know who i was if i were to even recognize myself and i have to say this i don't think up until that point though i knew who i was because my identity was in the navy it was mm. in so it's like i didn't even know who i was even looking for mm. <laughs> Were you scared of, about your future too? Like, where you, what are you going to do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say you got a secure job, secure paycheck, probably doing quite well. Yeah, and, and I also, even... also, now what? Like, now I'm injured and now... Right, and we talked about school, and granted, I, I, I did school there, but I actually went to, to school I was in to get a degree I wasn't even really interested in just as promotional purposes for the Navy. You know, that was all also about the Navy. It mm -hmm. wasn't even about something I'm interested in for life after. It was about to help me do my job better in the Navy. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So what um, what do you start with? Like, where, where do you start? Do you start moving? Do you get off pills? Do you... So I, at that point, I didn't know. Where, where do you start? Yeah, so. that's, I'm, I'm literally... <laughs> Here's, um, yeah. I don't know where to start. So I hired uh, professionals in all the areas I wanted to improve in. All at once, or did you pick one first? Um, I, I think it might have been one, which kind of then you know the other. But I, I literally mapped out. Okay, what, what do I want to change, or and I didn't like to change. What do I want to become better at in my life, and what do I need to do to get there? And, okay. And because I didn't have the answer, you know, I wasn't a professional at that time. Um, so first it was, okay, working with my therapist very closely. Then it was, okay, well, I need a personal trainer because n I don't know what now I'm doing in the gym to get to weight loss. Then it was, okay, I need a nutritionist, need to, you know, make sure. And it was, it was all these different things that in order for me to be successful, this is the investment I'm going to have to make right now. Mm, interesting. That's, um, it's so simple, <laughs> but I, I don't think people realize the power of it. Right. Right. Like I have three coaches. I'm healthy. I'm fit. I'm not injured, but I still have three coaches. I do too. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's amazing. The accountability, the guidance, the and and that's the piece. I think it's the accountability that really holds us because it's like if you don't, and I hate to say it, if you don't invest in something, you don't pay for something. Well, you don't really care, right? Yeah, and a lot of people got this mind. Like I was a personal trainer for eight years, mm -hmm. and when I first started, I hired a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, "Why would you hire a personal trainer when you're a personal trainer?" I'm like, "Why does a professional tennis player have a coach?" Oh, that's the best. You can always learn. I you can always. always be held accountable. Always. To me, it's like investing in yourself, like you said. Yeah. So that's it's it's nice that you realize that you had to do that and how beneficial it could be. Sure. What do you tell? What would you tell someone else who is in the same situation as you were? Who may not have the funds to to hire someone or we live in a society where there is so much information out mm, there amen right so if you don't have the funds, absolutely like that's a, that's a thing right i mean money is tough especially nowadays and these trainers coaches are very expensive right but that is now quickly becoming kind of almost an excuse or a to not get healthier because you can find that same information there, you yeah, know, without. You your, it's in your pocket, right? Yeah, and whether yeah. or not, you, you know, you don't either keep the time or well, that's something else, but there's so much resource out there. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of identifying what you what you need help with and then learning about it and then applying it. Yeah, and becoming so obsessed with it, with the goal, with the dream, with the whatever. Maybe it's not weight loss. Maybe it's something else, but you have to eat, breathe, sleep, and everything in it. Mm. Yeah. Like when you got your trainer, at what point do you realize this is a right decision? Is it from the get go? It, is it is it hard at first? Is it is it is it hard to like show your vulnerability like that to to a stranger? Like, hey, this is it hard to show it to a stranger? Yes, but it's even harder to show it to yourself. So it okay. was before I even had that first trade. Before before even then, I it, it, that was already happening. You know what I mean? That hard piece. It was looking in the mirror. Yeah. That was, okay. 
So it's, that yeah. was after that. It was easy after making the choice to do it. It was oh, it was downhill. How do you there. motivate? Are you just enough is enough. Is that just? It, yes, it was. I was sick of feeling the way I was feeling, and I knew, or I learned very quickly that if I wasn't gonna say I'm gonna make a change, I will feel that way forever. Mm. And that was the scary reality. That uh, keep doing what you're doing and keep getting what you got, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was one of those, you know what? It's going to be so hard to lose 50 pounds. It's going to be so hard to, and at the time I didn't even say I wanted you know, to lose 50. That was over the years that happened. But it was so hard to do that. It was so hard to be like, oh my gosh, I have to go to the gym every day now. It was so hard to say, oh my gosh, I have to meal prep now. I, honestly, I didn't really want to do those things. But then it clicked to me. But you know what else is hard? It's hard waking up every day feeling like this. It's hard, mm. you know, looking in the mirror and seeing this person I don't recognize. It's hard. Either way, it's hard. Mm. So which hard did I want was more of the question. If I do this way, I get something at the end of it. Yeah, this hard becomes easier. Yes. If this I this hard stays hard. If or get gets harder. harder. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said that, I'm like, oh, it gets harder. Yes. <laughs> Love it. So what's uh, talk me through the process of the losing the weight, building your confidence. Um, it was, oh gosh, a, a lot of work. Um, it was every day, like I said, there was no excuses, days you don't want to do it, days you do it most, right, type of a thing. Um, confidence came second and not as quickly, but it wasn't in the physical stuff and it wasn't about, okay, obviously, you know, it helped when pictures with check-ins with my coach, you know, would start to get better and better, sure, but it was the confidence that I was keeping a promise I made to myself. Mm. So it was that, that day when I looked in the mirror and said, I'm taking my life back, I was opening up to the, every single day from that day and that's what gave me the confidence. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times I've had someone confidence in, in the seat say confidence is built by keeping promises to yourself. It, it is. I've heard it so many times and I've never heard it before until I started this podcast. And I'm very confident, but I always keep my promises to myself. So I'm like, is that why? Like, I never let myself down. Right? Yeah, I, I, so maybe that's where I get it from. I don't know. I just thought I was like confident. It, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I would argue yes, because equally that's how you also take it away when you don't keep it, right? Mm. I mean, when you say you're gonna do something and you don't, you say you're gonna go to the gym and you don't, well, now you kind of feel like crap all day, da da da, self-esteem goes down, I mean, both. Yeah, there's so many things I do on a daily basis where I, like ice bath before you got here, just hold myself accountable each and every day. Yes. Just to that. Absolutely, and, and that's showing that you're going to, it's telling your body, we're not waiting. We're not waiting to be comfortable to do something, whatever. It's like, you don't want to probably jump in that cold water. No, hell no. <laughs> but you're training your mind. You're doing so much more than whatever benefits are from actually being in the water, great. But you're doing something to your mind that it's like, we don't wait for the bath water to get warm. We're going to go in it when it's cold. Mm. And we're going to be okay. And what I thought about too <laughs> is like, it's hard, but my body was inflamed. I had some niggly injuries and now I feel great. Right. So if I didn't do that, my today would be harder. So it goes back to what you said. And as soon as you said that, like I could think of many examples like that. Yes. So that's that's really cool. That's really cool. I love that example. Um, okay. So you lose the weight and then is while you're losing the weight, what do you you want to be a therapist? You you're gonna get into training, you start to see like uh you you start to see where your career is going, right? So I started to see it based off I could I saw the passion in, you know, starting to work with my trainer, I saw whatever, and so at first it became well shoot, I, I want to get even more knowledgeable, not only, you know, for others, actually for me. Yeah, for personal reasons. Yeah. Like, I know so much about what I what I love. Right. For personal reasons. Exactly. The fact I can help others is a bonus. Bonus. So it wasn't even about that. I was like, well, shoot, okay. So then it was first, you know, personal trainer, which kind of down the health coach way or the nutrition way. And at that time, like I said, I mean, depression does not go away overnight, right? And I still, to this day, to even now, will have moments where you I'm still have ups and downs there yeah. we all do it's life mm. right and i appreciate those bad days because it makes me appreciate the good days even more um but so as that was you know happening I, I was in therapy and i was part of a very intensive you know outpatient program because i was in such a bad place and i had a therapist who i feel truly was kind of almost the catalyst you know i 
I don't want to give all the credit because they feel we have these amazing supportive people in our lives but we have to be the ones like I said to no one's gonna do it for us no one's gonna you know um and it was then when I was like wow if she gave me this life now in a way right because I made that choice because of her I want to be able to give that back to someone else mm. if I can just do that to one person to kind of give them whatever it is that they need to look in the mirror that day um then that's so. a true that's a true purpose right there uh, right yeah Mm. I always say, even this podcast, one person gets one va- uh, gets value from one video. It's it's worth it. It's man. worth it. Yeah, it's yes. so worth it. And p- personal reasons, I get to learn too. So selfish reasons, I learn too. So it's sure. like it's it's like win win. And as you know, humans do, do we like you know giving back and of course whatever. But it is in our nature ser- service. However, we do that in whatever ways, and you don't have to get paid to do it. And uh, again, that's probably just a bonus, you know, if you do. But I mean, truly, when you do that, it's magical what happens back. to for you. Tony Robbins talks about it a lot. He goes, like, if you're depressed or you're lacking purpose, go help others. Yes. Yes. Help others. Make help, help, helping others your priority. Yes. Mm. Okay. So now, personal training. So what are you doing full time? Are you doing a bit of both? Or like, so, what is actually your career, I guess? Well, when I got on the I didn't really, I didn't really have one. Um, mm. I was in a, I was fortunate. I was in a place where when I first got out, I, I didn't, you know, have to, work right o- right away too so i was kind of but i was i was lost in the sauce because i didn't really know um what it, what it is i'm going to do i was making some side money personal you know training and doing the things and and then i made that decision to want to be a therapist so i was going back to school for that um and doing that and then now of course that's what i do gotcha so would you are you a full-time therapist and you do training on the side now so I am a, a full-time th- therapist, but I actually, part of my method or my approach is mind and body. Mm. So it's not just one or the other. So I don't, I don't consider, oh, I'm a trainer and a therapist. I, I, I just, just I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a coach. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you do, do you, is it private? Have you got your own like clinic? How does it work? I do. Um, I have my own clinic um, off South of Durango office. So you come in, um, but I understand that there's still a stigma to mental health and I am respective you know of that and some people are not comfortable going in there and sitting on the couch and some people are comfortable going outside for a walk or being on the treadmill at the gym you know and i see it at different places so uh, absolutely okay. and that's, there's of course you know you have to understand confidentiality right if we're not in that private space someone might hear so maybe you're not comfortable in saying everything and there's a time and a place for everything um but so say if i come to your office and you talk about mind and body. Are you evaluating me on both, I'm guessing? I am, but I, I'm i not here to tell you, you know, that that's what you need to do now or whatever. I would love to guide you to also see this full picture that, well, if you get your mind right and your body's not, is your mind really totally right? Because, mm. it, you know, optimal functioning is mind, body, spirit. Okay. Right? Um, but that's something for you to be ready to make that change or to want to or and to... just creating that awareness. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not even... If you do decide that, I don't even want to be your need to be, you, you know, your coach if you don't want that, your trainer, you know, to go... If you have someone else, please, by yeah, all means. Yeah. But again, it's just that giving you that fuel that you may need to, to go do it. <laughs> that's... Yeah. Okay. The awareness, the fuel. That's interesting. Yeah. And then... um is it how often you see like clients is it as much as needed is it how does it work exactly it depends we collaboratively will develop what the best plan is for you it depends how severe you know what you're coming in with might be how bad is your anxiety how's your depression how's your self-esteem you know some clients it's once a week some it's once every two weeks and then we get to a point where three weeks one month you know and we begin to f- fade out because the goal is is not for you to be okay you know, when you come see me or because you're seeing me, the goal is for you to be okay without. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. And not having not having to see you is probably... That's actually the better, which, the not, goal, you know, right? not for me, but of course, yeah. that's, that's what that's what we want you to, yeah. Yeah, and then if they've not seen you, they're telling everybody under the sun that they're not seeing you and that's going to get you more business. Anyway, <laughs> right, but right? The, goal, the goal is to see you less, yeah. you know? <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. So what type of things are you dealing with for the most part? Like depression, anxiety? That's how it presents itself, but then it's uncovering, well, what's it's really behind deeper. that? What type of stuff would you, yes. do you reveal? Like, you, I don't mean anything personal. But what type of stuff would um, reveal like depression or anxiety? I mean, it could be... Like once you get deeper. 
childhood traumas. It could okay. be relationship scarring. It can be every, every day of our lives is what leads to it, right? It's mm-hmm. our relationship with ourselves, relationship with others. It's it's day to day stuff. It's work stress. It's it's basically things got piled and piled and piled and piled, and then now all of a sudden volcano erupts. That's your anxiety. That's your depression. That's okay. your Sometimes it's one thing, you know, sometimes PTSD from one event. Yeah. And often it's a multiple things of every day, you know, everyone's okay. story is different. Okay, that's interesting. And then um, I had a question for you and I lost it. You're singing then, you're talking, you're going deeper. And more and more gets uncovered. Yeah, more gets uncovered. <laughs> Is it, um, do you find, do you send, like, if it's, like, on the fitness side, do you, do you have certain people that you send them to, or do you have, I guess, people at your disposal, or you try to do it all yourself? I am all about community partnerships and, you know, everyone working synergistically, cohesive unit, um, whatever. So do you have, like, a nutritionist? If someone's, like, really wants to get into the nutrition, you suggest getting on the nutrition. If, if they don't want to do it with me, absolutely. Okay, so you you can do that. <laughs> I am, yes. I'm a nutrition specialist as well. Yes, so I'm you, certified. you can kind of do it all. I, I can, yes. Okay, do you have um, clients where you're doing it all? Like... I have a few. This is very kind of a new model I put in. At first, I was like, let's zero in. You know, I did the separate thing, personal training, whatever. Now it's kind of going to this bigger picture and kind of mm. inviting. Like I said, not everyone's ready for that. You know, not so it's a kind of a fine and a, a smaller population of, of that, which actually is probably surprising, right? Um, but it's coming, you know, to the realization of, of needing. This, uh, a therapist like yourself is probably pretty rare, right? Like what you're doing is like, I don't, I've never heard of a therapist that does kind of everything that you're doing, but I also think it's essential. I think it's amazing because you're ticking yeah. every box. Right. So is, is it common though? Or are you kind of anomaly? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I have not really seen it. I'm, I'm sure maybe some of you out there is like, wait, mm. I do it too. So, I mean, maybe there is many. I just know that w- the place I was in, if that one, you know, therapist could have been the guru for all the things. I mean, what a... Yeah, because what you, a, want to, you want to go to a bunch of different people, but you are those bunch of one different One-stop shop, right. Yeah. But I'm also very... Everyone's different, and we might not be a good f- fit, you know, for everyone. I, I, I say we as in, you know, the things that I do. So maybe I'm going to match you very well as a therapist, but maybe my personal training style... Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you might need. Some. Yeah, you get, you tend to click with certain people, don't you? Right. Yeah. What about so someone's at someone's at home or someone's watching this and they feel the way they're feeling down, depressed? Is it? Do you recommend reaching out to a therapist? You, just getting off the couch and start walking? Like, is there a, is there? A, I know it's a very broad question, but is there certain steps you can start to take today to start to make some type of change? The gen like a uh, general right off the bat, yes, I want to say is just do something do something just do what something. what is something and that's and whatever that means is that going for a walk is that calling someone is that it's gotcha. just taking one step because often we get so i guess blinded or we you know we can't see the forest from the trees we're like we have this grand goal and it's like oh my gosh i'm worried i need to lose 50 pounds or oh my gosh i'm depressed i need to be happier and we go so far to the what's on the other side we forget that they just one step. You don't need to worry about how mm-hmm. you're going to get there. You don't need to worry that micro, you know, take those big infinite goals, make it finite, just zero, zero in on just what do you need to do today? Just mm-hmm. get through today. It's funny. Every time you mention um, 50 pounds for me, I'm like, oh, that's only one pound a week over 50 weeks. But somebody else is looking at that like, oh, that's 50 pounds. Exactly. And 50 pounds, what a number. Yeah, like, yeah, like 50 like, pounds. Oh, that's, that's unachievable. But for me, I'm like, it's just one pound a week just over pound a week? just close to a year. Right. But that's two different ways of looking at it. And but that's, that's my optimistic, yes, you can do it approach, opposed to someone's opposite, opposite approach, right? And equally, when you mentioned that year thing about, um, you know, how long, and that could be like a while and whatever recently in my life there was something and I was telling myself I was like you know what it's just it's just 30 days it's just 30 days I have to get through it's just 30 days and then it hit me I'm like it's 30 days so much can also happen in that 30 days it's 30 days of opportunity mm. I mean it's however you know you look at it but nothing changes those 30 days or those 50 pounds it's still that value but you're right it's how you look at it it now either becomes something that oh my gosh it's so scary or it becomes oh okay 
Go increments, baby <laughs> steps. Baby steps, just yeah. one day. Just can one, you see one brick at a time, one yes. step at a time. There's an old um, a, a story. I don't know who it's by, but it's basically. Um, the guy is in the forest. He's talking to a, a horse, and you know the guy's like, "I'm so scared. You know, I, ca I can't see the 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 future. I don't know where I'm going. I can't see the path. I don't know how I'm going to get there. You know." And it, it, he says, "Well, look down. Can you see your feet?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, "All you have to see is one foot in front of the other." Mm. And you're going to identify the path. It's just that simple, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, social media, mental health. What's your thoughts? Who, Ikian be very powerful for better or for worse mm. um you think it's doing more good or more harm i would say more harm mm. for, definitely i think we have a tendency to compare our insides to everybody's outsides explain that to me so how i f let's say i'm feeling lonely and i feel depressed i feel anxious you know i'm i feel like i'm a loser because i w whatever all the things and i go onto social media and i see you know billy bob just posted that they got a promotion at work and mm. da -da -da, it's like wow like okay i really am like a loser failure whatever but we don't really know what billy bob is feeling inside yeah, or he's just going through a divorce with his wife and his kids on the other and side of the world. And, right, yeah. but, he, but Billy Bob just posted that. He just got to eat. Yeah, you see promotion. the highlight reel. It's the highlight, it's highlight reel. reel. Yeah. Exactly. That's what Elon Musk says. Like, social media is the highlight reel. So we compare how we're feeling on the inside to what you're presenting to me on the outside. Yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, yeah okay. And then, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Talk to me more about that. Like, more, more on the social side. Like, where are we going wrong? Is it besides that? Is it spending too much time? Is it comparing yourself to others? Is it not getting outside and spending too much time on the screen? All, all the, all the I was going to say, is it all well, that? And every minute you're spending scrolling or posting or whatever it is that you're doing, that is one minute you're taking away from something else in your life. Mm. And so that's why, you know, it can be beneficial. And, you know, there's plenty of inspirational stuff. And I got to say, there's plenty of stuff that has helped me. And it still help you know, it still helps me that I sometimes need a little kick of something. But I, I discipline myself. I have a set amount of time where I'm allowed to, I call What's it, aim, time? scroll aimlessly. No more if it's like an evening time, 30 minutes is my social media okay. time. Okay. 30 minutes. Um, and even that's a long time to just... And that's a long time. Scroll. I will. Yeah. But I've got to, you know, recognize that love social media, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2023. Um, so I allow myself that time. But I like the honesty, it. though. I, yeah. I, I, mean, like, I like the fact you're being honest about it. Yeah. I like looking. I like comparing, you know, my <laughs> size to everybody outside. I mean, it's very unhealthy. I'm kind of joking in that. Um, but it is very mindful that we only put our, our best selves out there, you know. And sure, sometimes you'll post you have a bad day. And I, I mean, I'm not saying we got to, you know, put everything. In fact, probably should be very selective of what it is that you do post but that just to be mindful that if someone is going through those things that you listed or whatever they're probably not putting that out there mm. and so in whatever it is that you're dealing with you feel so alone and you feel like you're the only one and you whatever and, and you're really not so equally though social media could be very advantaged because you could be part of a group or, or something where you are going through whatever it is that you're going through, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Support group. Right. Yeah. And then I'm, you know, that's great. And I encourage, you know, our meetup group so you don't feel alone. Yeah, yeah. And okay. You find out great info like this podcast. I mean, there's mm. plenty of stuff, right? Yeah, there's definitely plenty of power. What I do find is I've never scrolled on social media and felt good afterwards. Ever. Okay. And I don't, like, oh my God, that I'm so. But let me ask. It's like. What I mean, what's your feed? Because maybe oh, mine's mine's inspirational, mine's podcast, and mine's you never this. felt good. Off I mean, it. I'll learn. Yeah, I definitely learn, but I would never get off like oh yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. I never get off like feeling good. But if I go for a walk, go to the beach, go Absolutely. to the gym, um, jump in the cold water, whatever it is, that's when I feel I good. Feel, yeah. So it's like I learn a lot. I'm constantly on it to learn. I for business is all social media for me. Sure. I do photography, videography. It's all social. Um, but I never get off feeling good afterwards. Yeah, that's a, that's a good when point. I, when I aimlessly scroll. So it's almost like, so why why do we do it? I don't know. You know? I, I don't do it much. I'm definitely, I yeah. spend so much time um, creating than consuming. And that's just because I'm entrepreneurial, I work for myself. 
But I know most people are the opposite with this. Consume, 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 consume. Sure. But what I consume of, of the algorithm now, it's all positive. It's all podcast clips. It's all motivational. It's all fitness, nutrition, right. lifting. So if anything, it's great. But I still don't feel amazing afterwards. Sure. And I'm just being honest. And, you know, there's also some in that if and if you're you know so driven and you do so much stuff you do all these things your mind also needs a, a rest sometimes and sometimes yeah, absolutely I, and i saw that 30 minutes like yeah it's a long time on social media but it's also kind of 30 minutes where i'm kind of you know disconnected and and like okay well i'm like doing quote nothing but there is that i need to be very mindful because i tell myself i'm doing nothing but like, you're right i'm seeing stuff and what is that doing to my brain you know is it kind of leaving some blasting okay making me feel a certain way about myself even if i feel like oh i'm just just scrolling endlessly but then it's like well but what's staying with me my issue is you can scroll and see uh the war in ukraine and you can see a girl jumping with her boobs and then you can see some guy getting hit by a car and then you see some police brutality and it it so like when you think about what you just saw in the space of five minutes it's it's insane. It's insane. And we've become so numb to that, right? You're seeing like sexualized like young girls, you're seeing war, you're seeing like brutality, you're seeing shoplifters, and it's just a normal thing. If you were to see that back when I was a kid on different TV, mm-hmm. you'd be like, What the hell is this? And this goes to such a good mental health piece that we don't even can even begin to comprehend what that actually is doing to your brain. With no idea, right? Yeah. Uh, what I do know is like, I remember one time I was flicking and I saw all this crazy crap, which is so different. I didn't even blink an eye. Right. Didn't even register. I think someone jumped, there was a bungee jump, their collar snapped. And I was, I was just watching it, watching it. I was like, what the hell? Like, if I actually look at, if I actually think about the last 10 things I just saw, that's mm. stupid. The fact I didn't even flinch to that. Right. You saw one of them on TV, but oh my God, like the world's come to an and, end. And then it becomes normal. It's so normal and, and so numb to it. And then we get into these relationships or these, you know, whatever. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they said this to me or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, it's fine because I probably saw that, you know, on social media or something. And it's like, it's not like, oh, because it's like, oh, okay. Okay. I want to learn more about you. So, um, obviously you're exercising, you're eating well. Talk to me about your habits. Um, do you self-educate? Do you read books? Like, what, what's kind of your day-to-day? Constantly. First thing I do when I wake up, um, movement. I either, whether that's treadmill or stream master, just going outside for a walk. But while I'm doing that, because there's not enough hours in the day, I have a podcast on in my ear of, and it's some sort of, you know, self-improvement, really being into Jay Shetty, Lewis Howes, um, just a very, like, what's going to what's gonna inspire me today? Or what do I need to think about today? What are your favorite podcasts? Um, Lewis Howes, the greatness um, yeah, mindset. Lewis yeah, love yeah. Lewis Howes. Uh, Jay Shetty on purpose. Yeah. Those are my top two. Um, Ed Milet. Yeah. Um, there's so much good information out there now, right? So much good information. Andrew Huberman, it's amazing. Yes. Like, um, Chase Jarvis, who's seen that? London Real. Like, okay, I gotta. Th- there's so many, there's so, many. so much out there. Yes. And that that's, the, I, that's part of the problem now. There's, so much information it's like picking what i want to learn today and it's like that goal is overwhelming it's like there's so much it's not even going to pick one yeah <laughs> yeah but i'm the same anytime i'm at the gym audiobook in my it's ears my ear. anytime i'm in the car audiobook in my yeah. ears i literally I, I i'm learning guitar i play guitar and i love music but i like learning better yeah so i'm not going to listen to a song for ten thousandth time when i can listen to a new piece it's of information. that one minute doing that is one minute away from something else mm. yeah. and it's so crazy like you could drive five minutes somewhere and then um what you can learn in five minutes is it literally can change your life oh, yeah. i so many times i've listened to something for five minutes i've got this new piece of information new tool in my tool belt for the rest of my life i heard something that maybe it's three seconds that changed my life and it was the, the the key or however you want to say it to greatness or you know being the best at anything is doing what you hate to do but doing it like you love it oh that's powerful and i heard that and that every day it's 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 like playing like a banner through my doing mind what you hate to do but doing it like you love it that's powerful yeah do you have a favorite quote discipline equals freedom jocko willing yeah that's yeah that's it's so true though right right there yep do you have it tattooed? I do have it tattooed yeah, and it's amazing. at my watch, so I'm constantly reminded. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Another thing I really like is like seek discomfort. Yeah. Like just always do something that makes you uncomfortable because when you're uncomfortable, it's where you grow. And whatever is uncomfortable will become comfortable. Mm. And then you go to seek that next thing, right? <laughs> yes. 
even like a journal daily and i've got a section Great. comfort zone what did i do today push out of my out of my comfort zone Amazing. and it might be muay thai it might be um cold generally it's always ice bath because i do that most days yeah. but yeah just doing something it makes you feel alive yes because we're so damn comfortable and yes content and all these ugly words i don't like yes um so you do the exercise, you do the, the audio, what yes. else are you doing? And then I right away, after those two things, I make sure I get some sunlight on my mm. face. Um, two to ten minutes, like scientifically evidence-based, will can change your whole day. Mm. I find when I wake up in the morning, I literally stare at the blinds from bed and I force myself to look at the sun. And it, it does wonders. This, yeah. Yeah, it's just as something as simple as that and just like, take the yes. dogs out and like get in the sun. And yes, especially if you work in the office or you know you're inside all day, just get feel it, feel that sun. Mm. <laughs> do you, uh, how long till you get on your phone? Are you good with that or not? So I do not keep my phone in the bedroom. No oh, phone, really? no nice TV work. is in the bedroom at all. How good is that? And I refuse to even bring it, like bring it in. Like it's like. Really? Yes. So from what time to what time? So I try, I try my best to get off the phone about an hour before bed. Okay. If I'm really busy, naturally, you know, it just, it just happens. It's hard when you work for yourself though, right? Because everything is involved on your phone. It is. Mm. So there's that piece um but i if i have to be for work or whatever i make sure i'm not social media scroll or any of the stuff that i can control i'm not doing okay so, so you're actually doing something if i have like a text or an email or, or something fine okay. um but and then in the morning well i have to shut my alarm off and walk to get my phone so that's part of the great thing that gets you up out of yeah, bed yeah 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 <laughs> what is your is your alarm going off in the next room it's going off in the next room oh i like it is that uh, i've had a no. friend uh i got a damon on the on the um, podcast and he's like get one of those old school alarm clocks and put it across the room and that will get you out of bed yep but i like your approach like don't have your phone in your room put it in a different room and that's going to get you because the damn thing doesn't turn off does it you right. can't like it's not you like can. alexa you can tell it to turn off and if you're by your bed and you do and then you lay in and i did it this morning i hit it next to my bed yes and then your morning starts that way which yeah. i mean like, fine like no judgment. no no, no. Like, i it, i judge up. away because i know i know it's bad <laughs> Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's in the kitchen, so I have to get up. Um, I often they actually kind of say that if you put like by the coffee machine or you know whatever, then it's almost mm. like a nice little incentive. But anyways, um, so when I turn it off, I do want one glance over to see if there's anything emergency that happened. Over yeah, the night yeah. Or... Same as me. Just had someone canceled a podcast. Is my job where I'm going yes. to still on? I do that. And, yeah. But then, but it's, it's quick as possible. It's right? quick, and I leave it still plugged in. I change my clothes, my workout clothes, and I grab my phone, grab my keys, grab my water, and I go get that movement in. Gotcha, yeah. okay. How are you keeping on top of your diet? Are you meal prepping? Do you buy food prep? Like So I compete, um, which some for, for bodybuilding. So there's some parts, of course, out of the year where I'm stricken to a very thing, you know, with my yep. coach. But when I'm, you know, not doing that, I meal plan regardless. Um, very healthy throughout the week. I'm a huge foodie. So I think balance with everything, right? Um, but what that, is your balance? Is it like 80-20? It is, let's say, if there's one, you know, evening or you want to go enjoy or try a new restaurant, I'll be a little... So, like, once a week, you'll... you at, at max. So oh, really? So, you're quite strict. I'm very strict. And okay. no, you know, add sugar, refined oils. Like, I am a health nut when it comes to that gotcha. stuff. Gotcha, okay. Because I'm very big into the power with the gut and the mind connection. Mm. You know, what you put in, it's it's... The reflection of like it's who we are. Nourish your body, right? Nourish. Mm. We're a machine. It wants to be nourished. You're definitely that next level. That's <laughs> uh, that's good. Do you mind if I ask you how old you? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay, that's good. You're at that level at that age. Yeah, you got you, you got yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Like I'm forty three now, and yeah. what I have learned is you got to keep it because I can do everything I did twenty years ago. Yeah. I'm just as healthy today as I was twenty twenty, if not healthier. And be proactive, it's, not reactive. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Age is age. You just get you get more mature. You get smarter. But if you can keep your health, it's it's a win win. If I can comment on that piece that you just said about the age thing and something with mental health, that's also what we don't realize is little boy you or little girl me. That is still you. The only thing that changes, like you said, it's the number. Your hair might get a little gray, and mm. you get some wrinkles on your face. But 
unless you know life and experience and whatever it, it's it's still you you're bringing with you that trauma you're bringing with you whatever happened as a kid you're bringing so you know we always say like oh it doesn't matter how my you know my parents treated me or what they did to me or whatever it's like well, but, but did you do the work like mm. to for for you truly not to care because that lives in your body you have none of the work it's, it hasn't gone it's, away it's still yeah. you well whether or not it's affecting you in your daily life or whatever it's it's still you mm. yeah yeah absolutely uh, okay, that's interesting. Um, so you're eating clean like ninety five percent of the time, or something. By the sounds of it, that's yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, you maybe. Know, but whether or not I'm eating a little too much healthy, someday, you know, <laughs> maybe I should be eating yeah. a whole avocado. But I, I, yeah, I love healthy food. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, friends, family, everyone, pretty healthy. Around me? Yeah, have you got good friends? Good um, I can't say my my family is the healthiest. I'll be honest okay. with you. What about friends and environment? <laughs> show me your friends and i'll show you your future mm. so you got good friends your, your vibe attracts your tribe Absolutely. how did you um how did you build that Amazing community friends. um I, your vibe attracts your tribe i don't i don't i don't know it's almost like that energy that you put out or what you want to find is what you get back right yeah look for good find good look for bad you know if you search right now on the internet like will coffee ruin my eyesight or something totally ridiculous you'll find it you'll find it if mm. you find how's coffee gonna make my eyesight good you'll you'll find mm. that too <laughs> absolutely i 100 percent agree yeah yeah it's, it's all you put out is what you get back type thing yeah yeah and i always say if you become that person of integrity punctuality health fitness mindset you attract people back. and if you let's say maybe you don't attract it you'll know what you won't stand for uh pff, that's another thing too right yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, I, and um, the older I get, the the more I'm able to be black and white. Be selected, people. yeah. I'm like, if someone's justifying to me why they smoke cigarettes, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not having that conversation. You are right? I'm, I'm like, go tell someone else that who actually will, t who actually like. Body you up. I, I don't care. And, and this goes back, you know, we first talk about identity and whatever is you have to come to terms with who are you? Like, mm. do, do you even know who you are? What are your values? Mm. What will you stand for? What will you not? Whether with a friend or, you know, a significant a partner, whatever, if you don't know who you are, how do you know what mm. your boundaries are? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm definitely getting better at knowing exactly that. Yeah. Uh, habits, meditation, journaling cold therapy sauna anything like that in your day to day so in that sun light piece um i will do some breathing i will incorporate oh, you do some, some breath breathing yeah yes um the fluctuation of whether that's two minutes or 20 minutes depends on my schedule right but there's there's what type of breath what you do there's always time i love square breathing box breathing and yeah. for four holes before you do that just for um just to relax and and tell my body that you're safe basically it's okay okay i do box yeah. breathing in the, in the cold yeah so yeah it's literally the best way to yes. survive in the cold <laughs> yes it's like the only way to survive in the cold. and i know firsthand sitting with your thoughts can be scary often mm. you know if you've never done that so just taking time for yourself though right right and so sometimes i it won't be you know in just silence i'll maybe put on an affirmation loop like i am you know it'll just play all these things while i'm breathing okay yeah i've never done that i mean i have to try that one yeah. out and sometimes i'm not even totally listening but i know my brain is mm. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. um sauna cold um, I, I like love it. both. Um, I know I wish I had an ice bath at home. I would do that. I love mm. that. Um, I actually only take cold showers. Oh, you do? But even... You I know, mean, like, that's that alone is amazing. I did it for six years before yeah, I got a cold yeah. ice oh. bath. So I only do cold showers, but Vegas heat doesn't make it as cold as... It's you still know, good though. Yeah, it's still good. But you go yeah. to New York and it wakes you up. Right. Oh my God. I would love like an ice shower. Um, yeah, I, last time I was in New York, I was like, this yeah. is cold. <laughs> this is real cold. But like you talked about, you know, doing something about your comfort zone or whatever, that now is my comfort zone. So I don't even, mm. I'm almost surprised I remembered to say that. I every single day take a cold shower. I don't even look at how, that How as. long have you been doing that for? years really that's impressive so, so it's like i don't even you know think that's super impressive that, most yeah. people are so scared of the cold it's like, yeah and you've just embraced it right that's, that's awesome yeah I, i've done it for six years and i stopped getting sick wow yeah do you still get sick since you've done cold showers so with that immuno thing that we don't know whether or not those two the doctor said i i actually naturally get sick but i will say since i took over you know i did all these things so much less 
Okay. So much less. That's interesting. Yeah. Because even when my diet hasn't been good, but I'm still doing the cold, I, I'll, I don't get, I don't get colds. Right. I don't get any like basic um, sickness anymore. I'm sure you sleep better too. I sleep great. Yeah. I sleep eight and a half hours. I have an aura ring. I sleep eight and a half hours a night on average. Like, Amazing. And that's so important. Sleep is the most under underrated, you know, drug out there. <laughs> mm, and it doesn't help when we're just flicking through our phones two seconds right. before and we that, try to go to bed. Yep. That light. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you ever do uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, anything like that with your with your dieting? I find for me that doesn't work. Um, I I think for some people it's incredible. Mm. Um, so I love it. Oh yeah, I am not one of those people. I am a my day will not be good if I don't have my breakfast. Gotcha. <laughs> but I do recognize I train myself to be that way. Mm. I bet if I maybe did fasting and you know for X amount of time and kind of push through it probably would respond to that too mm. so you but you really just have to find what works for you yeah i totally agree what exercise what diet yeah what what if you fast if you don't fast keto vegetarian i don't think there's any right or wrong it's what works for you it works for you and so many people get caught up what's well, my way or the highway type mentality it's like no figure it out what works figure out for the you. best way yes i ate breakfast for 39 years of my life and then I started fasting and I haven't eaten breakfast for six years. I haven't had lunch for six years. Wow. I love fasting. I eat maybe in a six hour window. Okay. Uh, a lot That's of time great. in a four hour window. Yeah. Because it allows me to be free. Sure. Because when you wake up, you got to prep, especially when you're eating clean. It's different when you just have a cereal. Oh, yeah. Sandwiches. Oh, well, most of my eat, time is towards food. Exactly. And I got, <laughs> as I get older, I'm like, I'm so sick of having a full-time job to stay in shape absolutely it's it is. exhausting yeah and i have a daughter and I had a business and i was like i got better things to worry about and you found what but works for with you with the fasting yeah. 2500 calories put that in a space of four to six hours and mm -hmm. I, i'm good and I, I really love what you said about like there's my way the highway wrong way right way and that's diet anything i mean it's the same thing even you know when we're in relationships just because how you do one thing and you know someone else doesn't do it doesn't mean it's wrong it just means mm. it's different yeah a oh, different upbringing like yes. uh, i Okay, in Australia, we eat our food with our knife and fork. Mm -hmm. In America, you eat with your fork. <laughs> doesn't make it right or wrong. Right. It's two different countries, right. two different cultures, two different ways of doing it. Right. But if I was to like, if everyone's to like make fun of me for the way I eat, it's just, it's the food's still getting in my mouth. Does it really make right. any difference? And equally, I thought when, you know, my whole life was over because I was getting out of the Navy and the life I had planned and whatever, because I was looking at whatever wasn't the Navy was bad. Instead of mm. looking at it as, no, it's just a new plan. It's just different. Could you get back in if you wanted to? No. no. Just because you, the way you were, the way you were, for, you were forced to leave? The way the, yeah, the medical process okay. works, yeah. So even though you're, you're good now? Is I'm still a liability because nothing, mm. my back is still the same back. You, gotcha. You know? You're taking more control of it. Anything, anything could still happen. Yeah. I just don't live in the fear of anything could happen anymore. Okay. Interesting yeah um before we finish up anything you want to touch on anything you want to like kind of like go back over summarize anything you want to tell someone maybe going through something similar to what you went through i just really want to hone in we always have a choice kind of what we talked about the choose your heart i think that's maybe the most powerful choose your heart. You could, i like that you could take anything from you know this really is life is always going to be hard it's hard to meal prep in the morning mm, it, it it's is. also hard to you know there's always that other side though so either way which one like we said is going to lead to easier mm. <laughs> yeah yeah which goes to the joke i was saying right yeah the discipline, discipline equals freedom, freedom. It's yeah like short-term discomfort for a long-term gain yeah that's and that could be saving money living frugal that could be meal prepping mm -hmm. and going to the gym that's th there's a reading books like yes i mean the average american reads less than one book a year right i knock out about 60 a year i'm sure you do about the same Amazing. absolutely yeah and that just makes me wiser and ability to take action on more opportunities and spot things and yes better conversations hold absolutely. myself in better environments yes your your limits are wherever you you place them but in order to i guess kind of you know figure out what that is is you you have to know where you want to go if you don't like where you're currently at mm. so i always tell people you know come in and you know i'm i'm miserable or i don't like my life or i don't feel good or whatever and then 
you know, but, but I don't want to do anything about it was always the follow up. Well, then two things are happening here. You're either not that miserable, you know what I mean? Or, or, or it's or not you're, painful enough now okay. to make change. Right, which yeah. is totally fine. But then rather than, okay, now you're miserable and you're miserable about being miserable. Well, then how about shifting the mindset that you can accept where you're at? You know, it's, it's one of those things. Or figure out where it is that you, you know, you want to be mm. and, and get there. And stopping and taking time to figure that out. Yeah. Because we just get caught up in day to day, busy. We never really stop. Right. Meditate, journal. Yes. But, yeah. oh, my, you know, my life isn't going according to plan. Well, it's like ask yourself really with humility, ask yourself, well, what are you doing or how are you contributing to that? Mm. Because if you're not doing anything better, you know, whatever, that's like, oh, wow, you know, stop, stop pointing the finger on life or people or it's all, all these things and take that time. What are you doing mm. to aid to that for better or for worse? Who are you with? Yeah. Just to, just to finish off, um, being honest with yourself, what, what does that mean exactly? That is when you ask yourself, what am I unhappy with? Or, you know, what do I want to change? That's really being vulnerable, like you said, and truly, what, what are you truly not okay with about yourself? And no one, you know, wants to admit that maybe I'm a selfish person. Maybe I don't like aesthetically something part about me. Maybe it's, you know, I, I don't like something positive. Maybe it's I don't like that I give too much to others. I mean, wh whatever that is to really b be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because in order to get anywhere or, you know, to change, to be better, to do better, you have to accept and embrace where you're at. Mm. You don't have to love it. You don't have to whatever, but you have to accept it. Interesting, which is hard. Which is very hard. Very hard. Yeah. Very hard. yeah I mean, think about it. It's like, that's very hard. It's, it's that ego. Oh, it's that ego. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thank you Thank so you much for Thank you so much for having that me. That was a pleasure. That was, um, the more I do this, the it just gets better <laughs> and better.